In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous forked cluster stitch. You will need your selected yarn and a crochet hook. I am using cotton DK and a four millimeter crochet hook, but you can use whichever yarn and corresponding hook for this project. It will work well with all sizes. You will also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle for sewing in your ends. Okay, let's get started. We're going to begin by creating your slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook and this stitch pattern calls for a multiple of one, so any number of chains, but you are going to add four at the end. So I'm going to do my swatch. So I'm going to continue to chain, Pause the video, work your number of chains, and then meet me back once you're ready. So I've just chained 30, and now I'm going to add an additional four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to start our row one. So row one is going to go straight into our forked cluster stitch. We're going to skip three chains, one, two, three, and then insert our hook into the fourth chain. So first of all, we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into that fourth chain from the hook. Yarn over and pull through, you will have three loops on the hook. We're then going to yarn over and go into the next chain. Yarn over and pull through, you'll have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through, three loops, you'll be left with three loops on the hook, and then yarn over, pull through those remaining three loops, and then you've just created your first forked cluster stitch. This chain three at the beginning, that skipped chains, do not count as a stitch. Now we're going to move on to our next forked cluster stitch, and the position of this is important. We're going to yarn over and instead of going into the next chain, we're actually going to go into the same chain as the last part of the stitch from the previous stitch. So we're going to work into that same chain, yarn over and pull through, we'll have three loops on a hook, and then yarn over, go into that next stitch or next chain, insert, Yarn over, pull through, you'll have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through three loops on the hook, you'll be left with three loops. And then yarn over, pull through three loops on the hook. And that is your next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way across. So yarn over, go into the same chain as your last stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, go into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through, five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through three loops. And then yarn over, pull through three loops. I'll just go through that once more with you. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same chain as your last stitch. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over, into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through, and then you'll have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through three loops on the hook, and then yarn over, pull three, through three loops on the hook. You will repeat that all the way across until your last stitch finishes in the last chain. So go ahead, pause the video, work those stitches, and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so I've just worked my way all the way across. The last part of my stitch is finishing in that final chain. Now what I'm going to do is do one treble, which is double crochet in the US, into that last chain. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So we've just got one treble crochet in that last stitch. And I have 31 stitches in my row. So remember, we're not counting this, um, this turning chain just here. So go ahead at this point, count how many stitches you have by looking at the top of your stitches and seeing these Vs all the way across, just disregarding those um, chains, those turning chains. And then we can move on to row two. 
So we're going to turn our work and chain one. The chain one does not count as a stitch. And then we're going to do a double crochet, which is a UK term in the US. This is known as a single crochet into that very first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. So I know for me, I'm doing 31 stitches. You need to be mindful of how many you are doing for your swatch or your project. So I'm going to go ahead and work those stitches all the way across to my last stitch, pause the video and then meet me back once you're ready. So I've just worked my way across. I'm going to turn my work and then move on to row three. For row three, I'm going to chain three, which will not count as a stitch. And then we're going to start off with that forked cluster stitch. So it's yarn over. We're going to start off in that very first stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then yarn over, go into that next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops and then yarn over, pull through all three loops again. So that is our first stitch. And then the next stitch will start in the um, same stitch as the last one. So going into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, and then yarn over, pull through three. And we'll continue that all the way across until our last stitch falls into the last stitch of the row. So go ahead, pause the video, work that all the way across into your last stitch, and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so I've worked my way across. I have checked the amount of stitches that I have, and I have 30 of the forked cluster stitches. And then my last stitch is going to be in the same um, stitch as the last, so the very last stitch of the row, and we'll do a treble crochet, which is a double crochet in US terms. So from this point forward, it's a row repeat. You're going to repeat rows two and three until you get to your desired height. I'm going to go ahead and build a few more rows so that you can see what it looks like, but you can rewind the video if you need to, to repeat those steps. Okay, so I've just built a few more rows now, and this is what it's looking like. And what I find really nice about this stitch is that it looks beautiful both on the back of the work and also the front of the work. Um, so you can choose which way you want to have it for your particular project. I really like this ridge side. I think it looks absolutely stunning. Um, gives a really lovely effect. It is a really dense stitch, so it is a little bit of a yarn eater, but I think we can forgive it because it's just so stunning. So if you like this stitch and are looking for more, which are a little bit similar, then I think you also might like this stitch here.